We were interested in obviously the reasons for why B1.617 is is expanding in India and one of the first questions we were asking um relates to the kind of hype that's been around this virus which is that it's a double mutant in other words it has uh two mutations which have been described uh, separately to um confer advantages to the virus in terms of uh, evading antibodies of so L452R and the other mutation uh, uh is at position E484 uh and the interesting thing is that this virus has a q at position 484 and the worry was that the this q would be the same as an e484k change which is found in the uh, variants which emerged in south africa and the uh, one which emerged in um, brazil so that's why people were very worried gave it this label and we wanted to explore that further so what we did is we uh, generated uh, artificial viruses which um have the uh, spike protein on the surface and this is a well validated system it, it explains um what we see in the clinic very very nicely without the need to to use the whole live virus uh and so we make these mutated spike proteins and then we test the ability um of antibodies to block those viruses from entering a cell in other words uh, neutralization is what we call it it's a block a blockage of the um of the spike protein and of course if the spike protein has mutated or changed some of our antibodies made from vaccination may stop being able to recognize that spike protein and so we used serum or blood from people vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine the mrna vaccine and i should say that i don't expect there to be big differences between the Pfizer vaccine and let's say astrazeneca because they all use the same sequence uh, of building blocks in the spike protein the same coding sequence so what we found is that um you know we made the individual mutations we found that 452 uh the one of the mutations um uh, did increase the uh, uh relative resistance to antibodies by about four or five times uh which is modest it's a relatively modest or small effect but it's still significant and it's similar to what people have found for the california variant in the past uh in re- peer reviewed publication uh and uh when we then did the e484q k and q we did both the k which is the classical one in the brazil and south african variants we found uh around uh, we found over 10 fold uh, uh loss of susceptibility to the e484k um, um and when we did the e484q with the one in the um uh, uh indian variant or 617 uh we found that it was more modest it was around the sort of six fold mark but so so still still appreciable um but the important finding uh is when you put them together uh, the the effects did not add up in that you didn't get sort of five time five fold plus another you know six fold you know so uh, which would normally give above 10 fold we, we actually found the 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 fold change or re- reduction in uh, neutralization only around the five fold mark so so that's reassuring that th- this double mutant is not double the you know double the effect of the muta- individual mutations or the single mutation it actually has a a a, a kind of uh, interaction effect so so for in terms of ev- evading our immunity from a uh, vaccine uh, from from following a vaccine uh we think that the the effect will be modest it could still obviously uh, result in infections despite vaccine but we still obviously expect the vaccines to be protective uh, uh against um severe disease and death yes i would because covaxin is uh is a uh, uses a, a a virus that is uh has this has a similar sequence uh in the spike to the astrazeneca and the um pfizer vaccine so i'd expect a similar sort of effect and indeed um uh, one a group in india has has reported that the um change in or the 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 difference in how well the antibodies from covaxin neutralizes the b617 is actually only around two fold i think reduced so that that's uh, kind of in the ballpark you know anyway you have to remember that you know our numbers were small there were only nine patients in our study um and uh and so the confidence intervals around our estimate you know were relatively wide and so the two fold effect that they found with the whole virus is not vastly different from the four or five fold effect that we're seeing uh, using using our system so uh so in general it's in the right direction of of reassurance um but we should remember that um that there are two significant mutations in this uh, spike protein in 61 B617 uh that pro- potentially in, uh, uh generate a more infectious virus so it's potentially um more uh, more transmissible and infectious and we still need to establish that
yes, it's more. It appears to be more transmissible, and it has some aspects of immune evasion, and that it's not it's not as sensitive to antibodies as the B117, for example, uh, which is the UK variant, which is also circulating in India at the moment. So um, it may have an advantage over the UK variant because now in India, many people have been infected. They have some antibody immunity. They also have some vaccine um, protection. Uh, so, so we may find that B one six one seven has an advantage over B one one seven and transmits better in that population. Uh, um, uh, that's kind of semi immune, you might say. Um, is it something to worry about? Well, I guess uh, the the what there is to worry about is clearly the amount of death and disease that's going on. That's the key thing to worry about, and that would have hap would happen with most of these strains. I don't think that. Or variants, the you know the actual variant is not responsible for the majority of what we're seeing. It, it's just uh, it's a, it's an added problem um, uh, of a lack of containment of transmission, and and so we know that you know social distancing measures, lockdowns, um, are are effective ways of of curtailing transmission and preserving uh, health services. So that's the decision that needs to be made, really. See it in the UK. There are certainly people being infected despite vaccines. Some of whom become severely ill. We've had. I mean, I know of one person who died who was elderly. But you know, so so, and we know that vaccine responses in older individuals are poorer. Uh, so so, there are going to be populations that are less responsive to vaccines, less responsive to a previous infection. Their immunity may not reach very high peaks, and they may drop off much quicker, and therefore they may be more at risk of of severe disease from reinfection. Certainly. Certainly for me, it is because, you know, we described, you know, how um, variants emerge potentially within chronic infections, um, uh, along with other investigators. So these chronic infections in people happen rarely, but the more infections you have, the more chance there is for this to happen. And if somebody um, is infected with 617, for example, and then ends up with a long term infection, they could develop more mutations and that could then spill out into other people. So. There is the um, the possibility, certainly, for for further evolution of this virus, and then it, it almost certainly is going to happen. Uh, what the what the impact of that is is um, uh, debatable, and and um, uh, and of course, vaccine coverage is the most obvious way to overcome this. And in the meantime, maybe um, stronger lockdown measures.